Where did gray tree frogs come from? How did they get to be the way they are with all of their adaptations for arboreal life? How should they be classified with other frogs and with other living things in what taxonomic groups? These are questions which the evolution model, creation model, and intelligent design model all attempt to answer. They all make different predictions which can then be tested. In the evolution model, gray tree frogs have not always existed. Their adaptations gradually developed over time and they should be classified with other living things in a nested hierarchy of taxonomic groups. If the creation model is true, then gray tree frogs have always existed going back to the first week of life on Earth. They could be found throughout the fossil record. There is not expected to be a series of taxonomic groups which gradually develop the traits of gray tree frogs, and there would be no expectation that gray tree frogs should be classified with other groups of organisms since they're not related. They appeared suddenly and are completely independent from other groups of organisms. In the intelligent design model, uh, complexity is irreducible. Uh, quote, nothing works unless everything works. And so therefore, complex adaptations such as the uh, uh, change uh, to a frog body plan or the adaptation of a frog body plan to arboreal life could not occur in a gradual series of stages. And so these three different models make three different predictions about the fossil record, the anatomy, and the taxonomic grouping of gray tree frogs. Frogs in general and tree frogs specifically have not always existed in the fossil record. Zero are known from the Precambrian or the Paleozoic era. In other words, no frogs, let alone gray tree frogs, are known for the overwhelming majority of the history of Earth. Uh, no Osteichthyan fish are known before the Silurian. No Sarcopterygian fish before the end of the Silurian. No amphibians before the Devonian. No uh, amphibians of the group Batrachomorpha before the Carboniferous. No Salientia uh, bet uh, before the Triassic. No frogs before the Jurassic. No frogs of the suborder Neobatrachia before the Cretaceous. No tree frogs before the Paleogene. No uh, tree frogs of the family Hylidae. No tree frogs of the subfamily Hylinae or genus Hyla or species Hyla versicolor are known until later in the Cenozoic era. How are gray tree frogs taxonomically classified with other organisms? Well, they are classified as their own species, but very similar species are also classified in the same genus Hyla. There are tree frogs which do not pertain to the genus Hyla, which are nevertheless very similar and classified in the subfamily Hylinae. There are tree frogs which are a little less similar and classified in the family Hylidae, but not the subfamily Hylinae. Of all of the frogs, a number of families are grouped into the suborder Neobatrachia. There are other families of frogs in two other suborders, but they are classified in a broader group of the order Anora or frogs. Uh, Anorans are classified with some fossil uh, relatives in the group Salientia, and uh, they are classified with other fossils with the Batrachomorpha. These are the amphibians more closely related to each other than they are to reptiles, birds, and mammals, and this would include modern salamanders and Sicilians. And then all amphibians are classified with the amniotes, the reptiles, birds, and mammals in the group tetrapods. And so when we biologically classify gray tree frogs, they are classified 
uh, in a variety of groups which are nested. There are groups within groups reflecting varying degrees of similarity and relationship. Thus, the fossil record and the taxonomic grouping of gray tree frogs which biologists use support the predictions of the evolutionary model and strongly contradict the predictions of the creation and intelligent design models. Great tree frogs have not always existed and instead uh, the fossil history reflects that the first tetrapods long precede any frogs. This was then followed by the first Batrachomorphans, and then the first Salientians, and then the first true frogs, the first Neobatrachian frogs, etc. And so the traits which define the gray tree fog frogs uh, evolved over a series of intermediate stages. And the modern classification of gray tree frogs reflect that. Uh, they have separated from other lineages uh, at different points in history, and so therefore their groupings with other biological groups reflect the degrees of similarity and the years since the divergence of their two lineages. These support the evolutionary model's predictions.